Hi there, I'm Mike, co-op student working at MapleSoft, and I'm here today to show you all about MapleLearn. So to start things off, when you go to learn.maplesoft.com, you're welcomed here with the content gallery. There's lots of different examples of documents made by various educators, and I'll come back to this. First, I want to jump right into making a new document. Now, this is the main Learn environment, and there's a lot going on, but I'll go through each bit as it comes up. For this demo, I want to make a lesson on secant and tangent lines. I'll say secant and tangents. And it can be very small, so I'm going to zoom in just to make it easier to see. Now this here is a group with the little label one. It's sort of like a text box. I can place it wherever I'd like. Now for this visualization, I want to draw uh, an x squared graph and two points with the line between it. So if I just type out my function x squared, right away in the plot window, it's going to plot that for me. Now I want to make it a function so I can use it later. So I'm going to define f at x and assign it the value x squared. If you've never used maple before, this might look a little funny, but the colon equals is just the assignment operator. And that's because equals is secretly ambiguous in math. It doesn't take long to get used to though. So if I want to point, I need an x coordinate, which I'll label little a and assign it value four maybe. And right away, a slider pops up, which lets me change it. I'll just leave it here. And to plot a point, you can use point notation. So I'm going to label point A with x coordinate little a and y coordinate f of a. And it computes it and plots it. And you can see as I move the slider, it's moving the point. Or I can even grab it straight from the plot window and move it there. Now for a second point, I'm going to use coordinate b, give that some value. And there's lots of notation in math. If you ever forget how to make a point, you just need to remember where to look. So up here, this is what we call the palette. There's lots of different options for different math operations, but here I want to look for the geometry commands. Now here you could plot circles, rectangles, I want a point. And it'll show you, oh, I need an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So let's do b and f at b. There we go, got our two points. Now to draw the slope, to, to draw the line between them, you need the slope. Right? This is where you use your mathematical knowledge to create your visualization. So the slope would be the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates. And you can see as I'm typing it out, it's automatically computing the value of the slope here. And that's because MapleLearn is powered by Maple's math engine. So as I change them, the slope changes. And then to draw a line, you just need the equation of line. So I'll say y minus a is equal to slope times x minus a. And there we go. Already a secant line, and I can change it very simply. Now, because Maple's math engine is automatically computing all these values, it's computing the coefficients here. Maybe that doesn't look so good. Every line here has some settings, and I want to hide the results. So that's going to not display it here, maybe make it look a little nicer. Cool, so now to take the tangent, we need the derivative. And in math, there's many ways to take the derivative and learn supports all of them. So I'm just gonna double click to make a new group just to take the derivative. Now, there's a little two here, and that's because everything in group one happens and then everything in group two happens. So if I just type out f at x, it remembers that we assigned f at x x squared in group one. Now I haven't mentioned it yet, but this here below the plot window is called the context panel. And what it does is it looks at the context of the line you're looking at and says, what operations might you want to do? Now here it says, oh, it's a polynomial. Do I want to factor? Well, I want to differentiate. So I can differentiate that, give it a second to compute, and there's my derivative. Now, like I mentioned, there's many different notations. Maybe you want to use f prime of x. That will automatically compute it. Maybe you want to use the d by dx notation. And again, that's a math operation. So if I come up to the palettes, here it is. Differentiate with respect to x, f at x, and it'll automatically compute it there. So to plot both the secant and the tangent, let's just use the prime notation because it's convenient. So y minus f of a is equal to the derivative at a times x minus a. And again, I'm going to hide the results just so I don't see those coefficients. And there we go. And right away, it's really quick to build these visualizations, and then you can use it 
to demonstrate as the distance between the points gets smaller, it, the secant line approaches the tangent line. And again, and maybe you even wanted to use the limit notation, you can do that too. You can use the formal definition, limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x. Divide that all by h. Again, it's sort of showing me here, it's not automatically computing it, but the context panel recognizes, oh, that's a limit. Let's evaluate that limit. And there you go. So these learned documents are very powerful in that you can quickly build visualizations and when it's powered by Maple's math engine, it can compute a whole lot for you. So this is what making a document is like. The other big component to Maple Learn is the documents that are already there in the content gallery. So I'm gonna come back to the main page and a wide range of topics already have documents made for them and they can act as a starting point for any of your lessons. So maybe today I wanna make a lesson on factoring. So I'm just gonna search up factoring, see what there is for me here. Now, some of these are documents I can look at. Some of them are collections, so quadratic factoring. Let's take a look at that. And there's lots of different examples, so I'm gonna just pick out this one here. Here we go. So this is a document that's already made an example walking through how to factor this quadratic where the product between the coefficients is negative. So if I'm gonna present this as my own lesson, I wouldn't quite do it like this. They have factor one, factor two, not sure what the difference is. Here I would want students to be able to interact with it and really show that the sum is negative five and the product is negative 24. So in this table, we can assign values. So I'm gonna assign this column, the sum as F1 plus F2. And right away it fills that doc, that table with values of, from the first two columns. If I want to add another column for the product, well, if in doubt, go to the palette here. So let's look for, yep, tables. And I want to add another column, make my product, assign it the value of F1 times F2. Oh, just a little typo. There we go. Now also it presents the solution here. I wouldn't want a student to click this and see the solution right away. So I'm gonna add a collapsible section, which is really nice, title this solution, and I can hide that all initially. So there we go. So this looks a lot nicer for me. Now if I want to share this with my class, what I would do is I would just go over here, click the share button, and this creates a share link. And this is like a snapshot of this document in this moment of time. So if I open up a new tab and go to this link, this is what students would see if you gave them this link. They would say, oh, well, here's an example. Go through, maybe make sure to check out values, see if I can get the sum to add up to negative five, the product to negative 24, say, oh, there's our answer. And they can look at the solution just to be sure. Now, students will find every way to mess things up. What if they go, oh no, I deleted everything, what can I do? Well, there's a very convenient reset document button up here, which resets it to the state of the snapshot when you shared it. So very quick and easy to get back to the starting place of this document. And any edits that are made with the share link do not affect your original version. So you have your version here, you can save it to your own account so you can edit it later or just make a share link to share with someone else. So. These documents in the content gallery act as a great starting point for you to build your own lessons too. Now, I wanna show some examples of documents that I think really highlight the power of MapleLearn. Um, this first one here, Rate of Change, this was inspiration for my uh, document at the start. And you can see they even have an animation here. You can animate some of the values changing too. So they've presented some information, little animation, small interactive component and maybe say, hey, you have these points. Well, what if I want a line to fit through these points? Well, if I select this table here, the context panel is gonna recognize, oh, you're looking at a table of values. Maybe you wanna add a linear regression. So I can just do that. It'll compute it right away for me. And if I make the independent variable X, it's gonna plot it as well using X there. 
So this is a wonderful example. And even at the bottom, you know, you can link to other documents, find out more information, hide the visualization with a collapsible section. It's really easy to organize information, present it, make something that's interactive for students to read and play around with. Here's another great example. Some differential equations. I really love this, being able to view the entire field of families of uh, solutions to this DE. And in the plot window over here, it's plotting the particular solution for some given initial condition. And this document sort of walks you through, how can you solve it? Well, the context panel is going to recognize, oh, you have a differential equation here. What if you want to solve the differential equation? And boom, right away, it can find the general solution using C1 sort of to define in general. And now if you have initial conditions, I'm going to make sure that this function is assigned this value so it remembers it. You can give it those initial conditions. So y at a is equal to b. And our context panel is going to recognize, oh, maybe you want to solve for a particular variable here. And I'm going to solve for c1. Let it compute. And there's our general solution for a general initial condition of a differential equation. So some very powerful stuff, some very powerful stuff. Now, one last example I want to show. This is a cool one. This is some practice, some practice made. Now, documents, like I showed, can be made completely within Learn. But if you're very familiar with Maple, you can create documents in Maple and deploy them to Maple Learn. And this gives you some more power behind what I'm going to show you here. So this is an example of practicing curve sketching, walking you through. So step one, saying click the plot where it intersects the x-axis. Now, you can look at the function and say, oh, it crosses at 0. And spoilers, I've been through this example, so I know there's another one at x equals 9 here, and says, oh, correct. It recognizes that I've clicked the right spot, and it's summarizing the steps that I'm doing. So let's go on to the next step. Next step in plotting, click the y-intercept, which is going to be right here, very convenient. And I can go through this, and maybe, oh, no, I get stuck can show me the next step. It can automatically do that for me. And as you walk through this example, it can build up some great practice of just repeating the steps, repeating the steps of how do I practice curve sketching. And what's really great, I can just try another one. This can randomly generate more practice for me to try. And again, this is when you use Maple to create these documents, you can add extra functionality like randomization, but none of this is required. Now, a lot of it might seem intimidating if you've never made something like this before. MapleSoft offers training on how to use Maple to make documents like these, and we also have a content team to help support any customers make more complex documents like these. So that's all the examples I wanted to show. There's just a few more notes I want to share. All of these visualizations that we've seen have been in 2D. One big question that I get asked a lot is, can it do 3D? And the answer is yes. If you define some 3D function like cos of x times sine of y plus x, I'm going to open up the context panel and it says, hey, do you want to plot this? And yes, I do. And it's going to load that for me. And right away, I can move it around. I can look, I can see, and it, it updates as I change the function. So 3D plots, no problem at all. Um, and some final thoughts just to leave you with. One of the best parts about this, I think, is the amount of content that's here, right? I can go to functions, and, you know, different kinds of functions. All of the content that's already here, it's easy to have a starting point to make your own documents. Or like the curve sketching practice, I'm just going to search up practice. There's lots and lots of great examples, some of them like that curve sketching one, which give detailed feedback derivatives, there's exponent rules. If you ever have a student that's missing some sort of foundational knowledge, you can just say, hey, go through this practice. Practice until you're comfortable. It can really help um, for students to fill the gaps so they can learn the next content. Um, and the other big thing about this I like is that it's easy to get into. Like I showed at the start, really you're limited by your imagination of, you know, what is it that you want to visualize and can you represent it as math? Um, for me, it only took me one training session and I felt confident enough to jump into making documents. 
So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoy Maple Learn. Thank you.